So my name is Dr. Ben Muller and I just want to explain to you how a rhino dewarning procedure works. So it's obviously a procedure where we put a lot of um, time and planning and effort into and it will generally start with a vet and a helicopter pilot being part of the air team and then we've also got a, a ground team to assist with the procedure. Uh, we generally obviously try to work early mornings or in winter days when it's nice and cool and basically we'll go up into the air, we'll find an individual that we want to work with, be it a black or white rhino and from there we dart, we, we dart the animal and with a combination of drugs that generally gives us immobilization um, within I'd say anything from about three to five minutes. Um, after those five minutes the animal's generally safe to approach and that's usually when uh, generally our ground team we would have talked them into the animal already and they'll be close by and then from there we basically blindfold the animal, we stabilize the, the anesthesia uh, with maybe one or two other drugs and providing supplementary oxygen and we also just position the animal so it's lying comfortably uh, for the procedure. Um, once all of that's done and we're happy with that we can, uh, um, we can start with the actual dehorning of the rhino. Um, we've got a very specific way in which we, we cut the, the horn off. Uh, we utilize a chainsaw and grinders. It's completely painless for the animal. They don't feel any pain whatsoever um, during and after the procedure. And um, once we've tidied up the horn nicely and we've got all our record keeping in order, we can wake the animal up. Uh, once we give the, the antidote or the reversal, they're generally up within one to two minutes after you inject them. And the entire procedure takes anywhere from, I'd say, probably 30 minutes to 40 minutes a rhino. So just to explain uh, what rhino horn actually is, it's, it's made of keratin. So it's the same material that your, nail, uh, your nails or your hair is made of. Uh, and it's, it's interwoven extremely tightly. So it's quite a dense, it's quite a dense material. And the horn actually sits quite loosely on the animal. Some, sometimes I can even break them off, but it sits quite loosely on their, on their, on their nose, you could say. Um, so when we cut the horn, we cut above the growth plate. So we don't actually cut into you know, any, any uh, uh, part of the rhino whatsoever. It's basically like, you could say, a nail trim. Um, and we leave quite a, just a little bit of lawn as well, just for protection of the growth plate.